Hi, and welcome back to the Java Tutorial Podcast. In this example, I'm going to demonstrate how to read from text files and how to write simple methods. So let's begin by just reviewing the steps that you need to take in order to write, read from a text file in your program. So the first thing that you need to do is along with importing the scanner class that we typically use, you also need to import the java.io.file and java.io um, exception classes as well. Also in your main header you'll need to add um, the, the words throws io exception. The next step you need to take is to instantiate a file object and you pass to the file object the name of the physical file on your hard drive that you're going to be reading from. The next step is to instantiate a new scanner object and notice that instead of passing the scanner constructor system.in like we normally do when we're reading from the keyboard, when we're reading from a file we pass the file object that we just created to the scanner constructor. And then the next thing you'll want to do is read from the file and um, normally you'll do that in a loop. Either you'll know ahead of time how many items are, are in the loop and you'll read them from the file or in this case we're just reading until we reach the end of the file and to do that you use the scanner method uh, has next. So we say while input file dot has next and we read from the file. And this example is just reading a line of text and writing it back out to the screen. And then finally the last thing you need to do is close the file. Now let's take a look at the file we're going to be reading in this example. Um, it basically is a file of birthdays and each line in the text file uh, begins with a person's name, their first name and their last name, and then um, also contains the person's birth date. And because the names contain spaces, we're not going to use those as delimiters between the names and the birthdays. Um, and so we have here this underscore character that's being used as a delimiter. Um, so when we read the file, we'll, we'll want to take that into account. So anytime you're working with a file, it's a good idea to simply open the file, read the data in, and just print it out so that you know that your file reading is working properly. So let's go to JEdit and we'll do that piece. So I've um, declared some variables here just to save a little time. I'm going to import. The import statement is first java.io. Now I need the file class and the IO exception class, but because I'm importing two classes from the same package, I can just use the dot star wildcard to um, in order to use both of those. Recall that I need to add the throws IO exception to the main header, which I've already done here. And so we instantiate our file object. And we need to pass it a string that represents the actual name of the physical file on our hard drive. That can either be a um, string literal, in this case birthdays.txt, or it could be a string variable where you've asked the user what's the name of the file. We instantiate a scanner to read from that file. Similar, instead of passing system.in, we're passing the name of the file that we just created. And then, in this case, because we're not using the typical space and new line characters as delimiters in, in this file, we're using the underscore and the slash in order to, to um, separate the name from the date and then each of the date fields from one another as well. So we're going to use this method called, this is a scanner method called use delimiter. And we'll pass it a string of delimiters that we want to use when reading from this file. So we want the underscore character or, we're using a pipe symbol, not two, but one of them as an or character here, an underscore or a slash or a return character, which is similar to a new line a return character which is backslash backslash r and um, that may or may not be present depending on um, the system that the file was created on so we're going to put a question mark which means that may or may not be included and then a backslash n 
Then we're going to write the loop. And the way we do that is we say while and file dot has next. We're going to read in each of the values on, on each of those lines. We're going to, or on a single line, we're going to read in name using in file dot next, not next line. That would read in the entire line. We just want to read until we see a delimiter, which is what the next method does. And then birth month. And remember, we can read from our file just like we do from the keyboard. Okay, so that'll read all my data in. And then for now, all I want to do is test and make sure that I'm opening and reading the file properly. I'm not really going to do anything with this data yet. I just want to print it. So I'm going to also add to my loop a printf statement. And I'm going to use a percent %s format to print the name. Um, if you want your string to be left justified, you put a minus sign in front of the field width, and that'll, that'll make it left justify that value. And then we also need to pass to this printf method the four arguments that we want to print. Then, okay. then I need to end my loop here. So this is just going to loop as long as there's data in the file. It's just going to read it in and print it out. And then I want to remember to close my file as well. So let's save and compile and test this and make sure that it works correctly. And if I look here at the output, I see that it's printing everyone's name and their birth date uh, as well. And so that's what I expected. If I had any problems, then I would need to go in and make sure that I was actually reading the file correctly. But in this case, it looks like we are. So now I want to write several methods to um, manipulate this data that we're reading from the file to format it and make it look a little prettier. And so before we do that, let's go and review some of the things that we need to do uh, when we're writing methods. So first recall that a method will be part of your class, but it's separate from the main method. It has its own header. And for now we're just going to declare public static void method or public static methods. Void means it's not returning anything. So that's the header. And then the body can contain any code that we like. Notice there are parentheses after the method name, and that's just a user-defined name there, that repeat method message. And what happens is the way the, the method is executed is as our main program goes along, uh, if it comes across a call, what's called a method call or invoking the method, if it comes across a method call, then the flow of control, which ordinarily just proceeds through the main method, flow of control is transferred to that method, repeat message. It executes the code in that method, whatever it is, and then comes back and just continues where it left off in the main program. So it would go on and execute the next statement and just continue through. And we might have multiple calls to the same method, in which case it would come back, execute it, and go back to where it was called from. We sometimes want to pass values into our methods so that we can use those to alter the way it executes. So in this example, we're passing 8 in to indicate that we actually want to print the string I love Java 8 times or n times instead of just 3. The value that we pass in, which can also be a variable or an expression, as long as it's, as it's of the correct type. So the, that, it, that value that we pass in when we call the method is called an argument. And we um, get that value and use it in our method through the use of a parameter. And so in the parentheses, in the method header, we list the parameters we want to use. In this case, we just have one. And we put the parameter type and then the name of the parameter, in this case, n. We can also pass multiple values in. And as long as their the type and number match up, uh, the, the header, the parameter list, matches up with the call, then it, it should work fine. So in this case, I have an, an int and a string parameter. And so if I pass in an int and a string value, notice we put commas between the uh, parameter. Um, our methods can have return types if they're computing something. For example, in this case, this one's computing the number of, of characters in a, in a given string. And so it has a return type. 
If we have a return type, then we have to have a return statement in the method that returns a value um, or an expression or a variable of that type. And what happens is when we invoke the method, then the value that gets returned from the method base essentially is, takes the place of that, of that method calls. So that's just a basic review of the syntax of methods. And so let's look at what we want to use methods for in, in our birthday example. So what we want to do is take our input file and we want to format the output a little bit by, so we want to, um, when we print the dates, instead of printing them as number slash number slash number, we want to print the name of the month and then the day comma year. So we're going to reformat that a little bit. We also want to be able to calculate the person's age, which we'll simply do by taking uh, the current year, which we'll ask the user for. We'll take the current year and subtract the birth year uh, in which the person was born. We'll also need to take into account, though, whether the person has had their birthday or yet, yet or not. And then we also want to check for valid dates as we go along. So in this case, if we look at Steve Smith, his birthday is July 32nd, that's an invalid date because the day, the, the day is too large. Um, Lisa Davies' birthday is invalid because her birthday is past, the, the birth year is past the current year, which is 2009. And then one last thing we want to be able to do is we want to check the, each person's birth month and day against the current month and day so that we can tell them happy birthday if it's their birthday. So we'll add methods to check for valid dates and to calculate the age. And so I suggest that you write your methods one at a time, test them. Uh, don't try to write them all at once. So we'll write our method to determine whether a date is valid or not. So this is a public static method, and it is going to have a return type. In this case, I'm going to return a Boolean, either true or false. Either the date is valid or it's not valid and I'm going to call this method is valid. And so in order to determine if a date is valid, I need, I'm going to need uh, values passed in, arguments passed in, and so I'm going to declare parameters for the month, the day, and the year. And then I also need to know the current year in order to check that, that birth year and make sure it's not past the current year. And then I'll simply, in this method, check to make sure. We could do some fancy checking to make sure that, um, for example, February, uh, we wouldn't have allow a February 30th. We could also check for leap years and do all sorts of fancy things, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to do some ch simple range checking here, and we'll make sure that the day is between 1 and 31. So if the day is less than 1 or bigger than 31, we'll consider that to be invalid. If the month is less than 1, or the month is greater than 12, or if the year is greater than the current year. So, so if this is the case, then it's n if any of these conditions exist, then it's um, not a valid date and we're going to return false. Otherwise, we'll return true. Alright, so we have our method is valid. Now we have to call it, and we're going to call it in our loop as we read in the birth dates, we're going to check to see if it's valid or not. And if it's, uh, if it's not, then we want to set a message that tells the, the uh, that prints on our report to the screen that that's an invalid date. So if is valid, if it is valid, and we'll pass birth, month, these are our arguments, so they can be variables here, birth, day, and birth, year, and we're also going to pass in the current year, and I need to add the code up above to ask the user for the current month, day, and year, so I'll do that before, before I test this. So if it's valid, then I have a variable called message, and this is for invalid or uh, birthdays, and so I'll just set that to valid for now, I'll change that. Okay, so if it's not valid, I'm going to add a message, invalid date, 
and I'll simply add to my printf here. I'll add a format for that. And again, I'll make the, the message left justified, and I'll add that as an argument message. So now I'm not only going to read the birth dates in, I'm going to check and make sure they're valid dates, and I need to add some code outside my loop here to ask the user for the current date so I have something to compare it against. So I'm going to need a key scanner to scan from the keyboard. So this is just like we always do, and it's perfectly fine to have multiple scanners in the same program. Prompt the user. Tell them how we want them to format the data and read it in. Okay, so we're asking the user for today's date from the keyboard and we'll use that to test whether each of our dates is valid or not. So I'm going to save this and compile and run it. Run it. It's going to ask me for today's date. Probably used, should have used a print instead of a print line. But it asked me for today's date and it is, let's say it's 0322. I know there's a March 22nd birthday in there, so I'll do that. And I'll say it's 2009. And if we look here at our dates, we'll see that we have two invalid dates. Again, the Steve Smith, because the, the day is too, year, too, is too large, and Lisa Davies, because the year is greater than the current year. So that's great. That's what we expected. So you want to write your methods, test them, and make sure they work. And then I'm going to add another method. I'll add the, the uh, method to determine if the date is valid, then I want to go ahead and calculate the, their age. So I'm going to write a method called calculate age, and it will need, I'm going to put the call up here and then I'll go down and write it, it will need the birth, month, day, and year, and the current month in order to calculate the person's age because we need to figure out whether they've had their birthday or not. Okay. And since I'm doing multiple things here, if the date is valid, then I'm going to add curly braces. And then I'll also, if their, their birth date wasn't valid, I'm just going to set their age to zero. And then in our print statement, again, I'll add another field, and I'll do that before the me message, but after the birthday, I'll print their age. Okay. So now I need to write that method, so down here, it doesn't matter what order you put them in, I have a public static method. This is returning a person's age in years, so this is going to return an int. In the call, I called it calculate age. And it is expecting a birth month and us. And then in here, I'm going to calculate the age. I'm going to declare a variable to hold that value. And then basically what I need to know is, has the, birth, has the person had their birthday yet or not? And I'll do that by looking to see they haven't had their birthday, or they have had their birthday rather, if the birth month is less than the current month, then they've had their birthday, or if the birth month is equal to the current month, and their birthday is less than or equal to the current day. In that case, we could just calculate age by taking current year and subtracting the birth year, like you would expect. Otherwise, age is equal to the current year. Oops, should have been minus up there. Let me fix that. Current year minus the birth year minus one, because they haven't had their birthday yet. And then I need, very important here, I need to remember to return age at the end. The method, the return value for this method is an int, so it expects me to return an integer value or variable here at the end. And 
piling one yet. And if I look here at the ages, it's printing them out. Mary Jones has already had her birthday. She's 17. Um, notice that the birthday for these people who have invalid dates is zero. So that method seems to work correctly. So now we want to write the method to return the name of the month given the current, given the month number. All right. Need the header. And I would normally put comments at the beginning of each of these telling what they, what they do. String month name. And it's returning a string. I want to be able to pass in uh, three, an int three for the month, and I want it to return March. The string March is the idea here. So this is just going to be one big if statement. If the month is one. And if you're familiar with a switch, you could use that here as well. And instead of declaring a, a month name variable, I'm just going to return that value from my method. So it's expecting me to return a string. I'm just going to return it. If month is 2, return February. And then return December if month is 12. And then we'll have a final return statement here. If we get all the way through this and we didn't return a correct month value, then that means the month is, is wrong. And so we're just going to return E to indicate, ERR to indicate there was an error. And then I want to end my method down here. So I have my month name method that returns a string given a month year. So I can add that as well. I can reformat it. So instead of printing the birth month as a number, what I'm going to do is print it as a as a string. So I'll do percent 3s then I'll print the day and then a comma and then I'll print the year. And so instead of printing birth month, I want to print the month name given the birth month. So it's perfectly fine to just to call that. I could call that method and save it in a string variable and print the string, but it's also perfectly fine to just call the method just like you might call math.round or something in a in a printf statement. Alright, so I'm going to save this and again I'll test this method. And it's asking for today's date, so I'll check I'll type that in. 2008-2009. Alright, and now it's printing my dates out using the, the month name instead of the month number, so it's formatting the way I want. So that's great. So I'm almost done. The only thing I need to add is I need to add the code to, um, to tell whether the person's whether it's the person's birthday or not. And I only want to do that with valid dates, so I'll just add that up here. So to check for the birthday, I want to have I want the mer the message to say happy birthday in that case. So I'll check here for a birthday, and I know it's a birthday if the birth month is the same as the current month. I could write a method to do this, but it's just a simple if statement, and so in this case, I probably don't don't need to do that. Birth if birth um, day is equal to the current day. And I know it's someone's birthday. And so if that's the case, I want to set the message. I'm going to change this valid. I was just doing that basically to for debugging purposes. So happy birthday. Else, if it's not their birthday, I'll just set the message to an empty string. So now, if it's a valid uh, birthday, then we're going to calculate their age, check to see if it's their birthday or not. If it's invalid, we'll set age to zero and say that it's an invalid date. So let's double check and make sure that this birthday code is working as well. Enter the date. And notice that it's Connor's birthday because I had entered March 22nd as the, um, as the current date. So that looks fine. 
Um, so that gives you a, an overview of how you can read from a file and how you can write some simple... I think that's it for this time. Thanks for listening. Bye.